I'm a big fan of content recycling. That's where you're reusing the, the content you've already created and automatically sharing that out on a schedule on all your social media feeds, making it evergreen. You know, don't just schedule it once and get some clicks, but, but schedule it over and over and over again uh, so you can continue to get those clicks. Well, there's services out here like Meet Edgar that helps you do that. And I'm going to, in this video, take you from starting up a trial all the way through the process of turning on uh, some content recycling. So, so stay tuned for this video. Hey, this is David with TechSmart Boss, and I'm going to do a video. I'm going to set up a brand new account on a service called Meet Edgar. So, if you go out to meetedgar.com, you'll see what we're talking about here. This is for content recycling. If you've created this great content on your website and you've posted it out on social media, what you want to do is continue to post it out on a regular basis. And what services like Meet Edgar will do is allow you to do that automatically. They'll allow you to set up content categories or content libraries and you place your content in there and they'll just go through there and pick out the, you know, uh, one of the things to tweet about or Facebook about on a schedule that you set up and do that for you automatically. So it's a great way to do it. Now, I've got a request here, an invite here for a free two-week trial. So I'm going to go through their whole onboarding process and start from scratch. What I like about this onboarding process, you'll kind of see the little note here, is that you don't have to put the credit card details in to get that two-week trial. And that, I love that because, you know, whenever uh, I see a trial and I've got to put all my credit card information in and things like that, I'm a little hesitant because you have to kind of remember to uh, turn that off if you don't want to use it and you're always kind of leery if you have to some places make you call them up they don't make it easy to cancel the subscription and things like that so you're a little hesitant so I love the fact that I'm able to set this up without having to put in any payment details so as the button say you know let's go here so I just put in my information it's gonna give me a little quick intro video here. I'm not going to look at this because I'm kind of familiar with the whole process of content recycling. I'm going to see how easy it is to get started and, and you'll see as well. So I'm going to go ahead and, and get started. So we're at their dashboard and it looks like it's going to show me uh, the initially I can add my social accounts. And actually there's a little sub here guide here that's going to walk me through adding my accounts, adding some content, viewing my library. I can add up RSS feed on my blog if I wanted to. Create your schedule and if uh, and then kick it going. Unpause. I guess that means make it live. I mean, <laughs> unpause assumes that it's paused. So this looks pretty straightforward, just like other type of content uh, recyclers that I've used. I like uh, the design here. I'm going to sub Twitter for this video. So let's go ahead and click here. It should. I'm already logged into Twitter, and actually, it's going to have me re-log in, which is great. It didn't use my browser cache. Uh, you'll see that I'm using Opera as my browser which is I've got a video out there showing you why I went to Opera versus Google Chrome so you might want to check that out but I've already got my password uh, and log in there so I'm gonna go ahead and authorize Twitter to work with my meet Edgar account that's always pretty seamless and it's the same way for all the other ones so we'll let that bring us back perfect now I will say uh, uh, I don't want to uh, send any automatic tweets or things like that. So I'm going to say no thanks to that. And that's a nice little growth hack they've got going, you know, kind of like a social referral. If I hit send, I just tweeted out their brand. I'm not going to do that. Uh, you'll see I've got one connected account and I can go through and add, looks like a couple others, as many as I want, companies and pages and groups. I'm not going to do that in this particular case. So let's go ahead and go to step two. Add some content. Now it looks like by default, uh, I've got one account set here. Now what's interesting about this is they haven't allowed me to create a content library yet, but it looks like they've got some pre-set up categories already set up for me. So I'm, it's going to be interesting to see if I can create some new categories here at some point. Now I'm sure I can click here and create some new ones, but we're going to go and, and uh, work with what they have here. So I'm going to select my blog posts. I've actually got one. Uh, let's... Uh, Let's take a look at this uh, blog post here, one of our recent uh, podcasts. I'll copy that link and um, we'll do a post. Uh, curious. All right, so I've got a tweet. Now, one thing I noticed about this is right now it's not giving me any information about 
how many characters I have. I do see where I can set up link shortening. I'm not going to go into that right now. Let's actually pick this one account that I have and see if it'll... Okay, there it goes. You'll see by selecting Twitter, it did tell me I'm seven characters over in my uh, thing. So just for now, I'm going to just take out my hashtag here and go ahead and set that up properly. Let's take a look at the schedule settings. I haven't set up a calendar yet. Um, so it looks like I can send this at a specific time if I want to do that and I can expire it. So that's nice if you're doing something that's promotional and you don't want this to go out uh, automatically to your feeds after a certain date. I'm not going to check these uh, right now. I'm going to leave these blank because I'll see later if it's going to you know, suggest some times for me. So by saving this to the library, it's going to save it to this category. So let's go ahead and save that. All right, it says my content was added. Let's take a look at the guide here. I can, and I, you'll notice here, I could go through and add some more content as well. So that's nice that uh, it didn't take me to the next step automatically. It gives me a chance to go ahead and do a couple things if I wanted. Let's go ahead and view our library. And here we go. So you'll see these categories are the libraries. Now, you know, what I like to do is set up categories based on the different types of content. Think about these categories as the frequency of how often you want things to go. When we go to our, our schedule, we should be able to set up a schedule per category. So I like to do things like, you know, if I have videos, I'll make a category for videos. If I have uh, memes or images, I'll make a category for my images. Uh, same thing for social accounts. If I want to have a different message on Facebook, a different tone, or I want to have longer than 140 characters, I'll have categories for Facebook videos and Facebook memes versus Twitter. Uh, so you could do all that uh, when we look at categories. But now I've got this one library, and you'll see that I, in my, my blog posts, if I look at promotional items, I don't have any. But in my blog post, I do have that one tweet that we just set up. And you could filter by account and do all kind of things here. So nothing really left to do there. Let's take a look. I'm not going to add any RSS feeds in that. So I'll say no thanks to that for now. But that's how I can automatically bring things in. Let's look at create a schedule because that's really one of the most important things about a content recycling. If you have a lot of content in a particular category or library, then you can post from that more often and you won't duplicate. You won't have the same thing go out. But if you only have a few things in there, you probably just want to set up a, a schedule where it goes out once a week or so because otherwise people will be saying, seeing the same post over and over again. You also have to think about the account. If it's Twitter, you can do a whole lot of things on Twitter. You know, you might want to tweet upwards of 10, you know, maybe even more times per day because it just kind of flows through and not many users are going to see it. But if you're on LinkedIn and Facebook, you might want to, you know, trim that down and not post as often. So looks like we've got a calendar here. Let's go ahead and click this add a time slot. This should let us pick an account. And, and it does. It's checked for that one account that we created. And now I can pick my uh, day of the week, looks like. So maybe on Tuesdays at a certain time. Uh, I'll pick my category. That's interesting. It has a random. I, I, I would want to have more control than random. So I would say from my category, my blog post, every Tuesday at 9 o'clock, select one of those content items and send out there. Now, I will say that this is, this is uh, I'm not uh, liking what I see right here in that I can't easily pick, you know, you know, something to if I want to save this I'm gonna to have to come back in and do one for Monday do one for Wednesday I can't multi select my uh, days of the week and I also don't see where they're recommending uh, the best time to post for me I've got to actually pick that time so there's pros and cons of this approach I would like this to be a little bit more powerful um, for my liking but you'll see here I've got that added to go out Tuesday at 9 and then I can repeat that process let's do Monday uh, the other thing I noticed, okay, I can type in here. So if I wanted to do something, you know, one little trick I like to do, and this is really not that important, but I pick weird times just to make it look a little bit more human than always the, the, uh, the, at the same time. One thing I do like when you do have the ability to have your scheduler make some variability, you know, kind of have your time and then have a plus, plus five or ten minute variant again it makes it look a little bit more human than seeing that somebody is always posting Monday at 1034 so just just one one idea there and one suggestion if the meat Edgar folks are, are, are watching this video so looks like I'm to the point where I can go to this last step now to unpause 
I don't know why unpause is just a weird term there it looks like it would be like turn on or activate activate might be a better term for that but you can kind of see here now I've got Monday scheduled for 1034 Tuesday and then it goes back to the following Monday and the following Tuesday and I've only got the one thing in blog post so you'll see every one of these is the exact same tweet that's going to go out so what I would do I'm going to go ahead and unpause this and turn that on but what I would then go in and do is hop into this header bar go to the library and add you know uh, a lot more well this is viewing the library let's see if I dismiss this guide how would I add new content to this let's see if we could this is uh, not necessarily uh, as obvious as it should be let's look at Q oh I'm missing it right there add new content It's a big button it's not that big, but it's a button. Okay, so that's the process. Let's go to categories. Just since I mentioned that, yep, you'll see here I can add new categories. And I might add one called Facebook Images or something like that. Uh, and you can include that as part of the random selection, which I'm, I'm not going to use. But then I could come into that. Let's go inside. Let's. Uh, so it looks like I can't edit the category to add content directly there. But now if I go to add new content... I should be able to pick that category and there you'll see it so that's nice so that's the process what you would do is add your categories add your content to all these categories then go in here and add schedules for all those categories and now you just set up automated social media you don't have to worry about manually going out there publishing stuff all you have to do is every time you get new content come in here and add it into your your library queues and then every time you want to see what's happening you look at the queue and it'll give you a nice visual of all the content. And if you did want to edit it and change it up or get rid of it, you can do that. So very nice. Well done. This matches up with uh, content recycling services I've used in the past. I personally use Recur Post. Um, there's CoSchedule. Uh, but, you know, I've always wanted to take a look at Meet Egger. So I was happy to see this two-week um, two trial. One of the things that I've been hesitant to do with Meet Egger is it got a little pricey. For me, I think it, it went up to about $79 per month. Uh, they have a current promotion going on where it looks like they're back to their original uh, pricing uh, pre-launch, which is $49 a month, which is which is not bad. You, you get 25 social media accounts, which is quite a lot. You get a thousand time slots on your calendar, which is a lot. Uh, it hooks up with all those things we saw from us. So the only thing it's missing is Google Plus, but these days, uh, you know, Google Plus is kind of tombstone so I'm not sure if that's needed but this is nice unlimited content you can you can have as many things in your library as you like so not not a bad price uh, it's comparable to what I would say is great for a small business it's a, you know I always say you want the return on investment you don't want to pay a lot if you're not getting a lot of return on investment from social media so this is a nice way to recycle make your content evergreen on your social media channels hope you like this a little bit longer went into deep dive on meat Edgar. But if you do have any questions, just reach out at david at techsmartboss.com. Uh, in the meanwhile, subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos like this. Go out to our website, sign up for our mailing list so you'll learn a lot more about technology like this for your business. And what we focus on are things that are easy to use, things that will increase the brand of your business, and things that are affordable. And in this case, $49 a month is definitely affordable uh, at this moment. Hope you enjoyed this and check out the other videos. I'll talk to you soon.